So I've been following your career for, for a, a minute and uh, it's just great to see you doing what you do at the UFC, man. It was, it was cool to see you come over and dominate and obviously have struggles, but, but come back into, uh, you know, into your own here. So I'm excited to, to talk to you, bro. Yeah, man. Hey, there, there ain't no struggles for a man who keeps on, keeps on moving forward. Exactly. You know? yeah, yeah. Ups, ups and downs, especially in this sport, man, you're fighting with four ounce gloves against the best guys in the, on the planet at your weight class. So, Hey man, you just keep on moving forward. And if your stock keeps on rising, winner, win, loser, draw, Hey, you know, you keep on going. Bro, you've cut some incredible promos too. And I just want to say you were one of the most exciting fighters when you came over and when we got to see you versus Dan Hooker, who I think is also on this card, by the way, too. So that should be kind of a cool thing for you. Um, you fought in the killers of the killers of the lightweight division. And again, win, lose, or draw, you've just been, you know, moving forward and fighting better and better guys. And I, when, when they announced 281, by the way, Madison Square Garden, your second time in Madison Square Garden, that's big boy stuff. Okay, not everybody gets to fight at Madison Square Garden. <laughs> yeah, man, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy, man. And this, you know, you just you just continue to want to pinch yourself. You're just like, you know, and that's why I'm so thankful for the UFC. I mean, obviously, fighting outside the UFC, watching from afar, you know, admittedly wishing I had that kind of platform all those years when I was outside the UFC, and now to come into the UFC, fight for the title, have fight of the year have debut of the year, possibly knock out of the year. Madison oh, for Square sure. Garden twice, man. It's just, it's been a huge blessing, man. And it's, uh, you know, especially now at 36 years old, I'm, I'm a, I'm a seasoned veteran. I got scar tissue older than half the dudes I train with. So it's <laughs> a lot of fun. That was, that was a knockout of the multiverse. Yes. Intergalactic. <laughs> all of that. Not I hope so. I hope so. I, I hope we get the nod on that one because that would be pretty great to win three uh, UFC awards my first uh, two years in action. Yes, sir. The fact that we – so we had Tony on uh, before his fight with uh, – what was it, 270? With Nate. Yeah, with Nate. What was it, 277, I think, 278? Whatever it was, we had him on. And just – it's cool to see the vets of the game getting love. And obviously, you almost have a second career now where you were with a different promotion. Now you're with the UFC making noise. And again, fighting Charles, fighting Justin, now fighting Dustin. Like, how has that been for you? Is this exactly what you wanted when you joined the UFC? It was. You know, it, it's funny, too, because some, some people say, you know, that there's this, you know, and, and there, could be some, uh, there could be some truth to it. But they said, man, you know, they, they really brought that Bellator guy in and really fed him to the lions, fed him to the wolves, you know, fought the toughest guys. But... Truth be told, the way it went, the way it went down was my first meeting was with Hunter Campbell. And I sat down in his office and I shook his hand and I looked him in the eye and said, Hunter, I want to be a good thing for your organization. And I want to come in and be and, and prove to you and prove to the world and prove to myself that I am who I say I am or I'm not. And I'm completely okay finding out that I am not that the man that I thought I was, the fighter that I thought I was. So I want to fight the toughest guys right away. I don't want to come in and tiptoe outside the top 10. I want to, I want to come in and prove myself right away. And I think I've done that and, uh, you know, I've been rewarded for it. I think myself and the UFC have a very good symbiotic relationship where I get a lot of, uh, I get a lot of value out of it. They get a lot of value out of it. And that's how it's been my entire career. I think guys, guys hit a very big stumbling block whenever they, they think that they bring more value than, uh, than the promotion does. Um, so I've enjoyed it. Tony, speaking of way too hot, man, like there was a fight. My my emotions are always going up and down during the fight because you know what I mean I'm not as brave as you gentlemen. <laughs> but after one of your fights, you flipped in a way that made me more afraid <laughs> in the fight, brother. Will we see that ever again? And if so, please don't. <laughs> yeah. Are you, so you talk about the, the the flip off the cage? Yes, sir. Yes. yes so sir. Uh, I can tell you right now, unless. Uh, Unless I get caught up in the moment. I mean, I did that just, just so you all know, I have never practiced that before in my entire life. No way. I have never done that before in my entire life. That was me getting caught up in the heat of the moment, UFC debut, getting a knockout in the first two and a half minutes of my first fight. And your boy went flying. Um, <laughs> Literally. I, I'm a, I am a, a self-proclaimed expert at backflips off the ground. So yes, you will see more backflips off the ground. Like you saw in my last fight. I think I did four of them in a row. Yep. yep. Yeah. Asking the fans if they wanted one more and they just, they kept going. So I had to, you know, I had to go. Um, but no, I, I don't have any plans of jumping off the cage. That was, uh, 
ill-advised and somewhat silly. And I have a, a wife and two kids at home and a long, a still, still a lot of gas left in the tank. So let's go ahead and just uh, keep a little more safe. <laughs> Was that the biggest moment of your career? Have you had bigger moments than that where you felt that amount of emotion where you were like, I'm just going to flip off the cage. Like this is the, this is the apex right here. I, I think it was, you know, I think, uh, you know, as athletes, we, we do a really good job of downplaying things, compartmentalizing things, blocking things out. Um, I think I told my wife, I'm not nervous. I'm excited. This is good. Told the fans, told the media, told you guys, I'm excited. I'm not nervous, but man, there was a lot of nerves, man. I, I, I left, the relative, the relative security and of being the face of Bellator, essentially. Mm -hmm. I had the rest of my career. I could have wrote it out. Everything was going to be fine, copacetic, and I was going to be, I was going to be a Bellator Hall of Famer. And uh, I took a chance on myself. I walked on, basically, just like I did years ago when I walked on to the University of Missouri as a, as a non-recruited guy and ended up becoming an All-American. And I said, man, I thought I think about the 40 year old Michael. If I don't go to the UFC and test myself against the best guys in the world, am I going to be able to live with myself? Um, so I had to take that chance, but there was a lot of pressure that came with it. So I think, yes, beating Dan Hooker, who had just went 25 minutes with Dustin Poirier for a moment, almost looked like he was going to finish Dustin Poirier yep. in that 25 minute fight. And for me to knock him out two and a half minutes in the first round, um, it was definitely the springboard that catapulted me. And then, you know, now the rest is history over my last couple fights since then. And now another huge opportunity against, you know, the guy that we just mentioned, Dustin Poirier. Let's talk about Dustin. Cause obviously the, uh, the blood is not so great between you and Dustin. I, there was a lot of words exchanged at a lot of different moments uh, in the last couple of months here. Like, how do you see this fight? How do you see Dustin as an opponent with your skill set versus his skill set? When you get in that cage, what do you, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, truthfully, I know it's not what the fans want to hear, but I don't even feel like I'm fighting Dustin Poirier. I'm fighting a guy my size with a head, two arms and two legs. And I've been competing in hand to hand combat since I was 14 years old and wrestling. Um, but you know, yeah, there's been, been a little bit of back and forth. And I think, I think the funny thing is Dustin is the guy that I think I have some of the most respect for in the entire world, in the entire MMA world. Um, and we've, and we've probably been more cordial and it had more opportunities to be around each other and speak highly of each other and be cordial with one another. So I think, you know, his, I'd rather sell hot sauce than fight Michael Chandler comment. And my, you know, is Dustin Poirier really a draw? Cause at that time he was talking about going to 170. He was talking about fighting Nate Diaz. He was used the R word. He talked about retiring, mm -hmm. not making 155 anymore. You know, I think I've said some things that have set him off. He said some things that have set me off and both of us kind of think, hmm, I don't know if I like that guy as much as I thought I was going to, you know, <laughs> and ultimately it's all rooted in he's a guy who's trying to become the best in the world and provide for his family and create a legacy. And I'm a guy on the other side doing, trying to do the exact same thing. So there's going to be tension no matter what, but rest assured me and Dustin Poirier will go out there and put our best foot forward, put our best fight forward. And it'll end with a handshake and a mutual respect. And as an opponent, he's extremely good. He's extremely good everywhere. Um, you know, it's no, it's no secret that he's, he's a knockout machine. He's a punches and bunches footwork, uh, keep the foot on the gas. And if he gets you hurt, he's trying to get you out of there. And I think I'm kind of the same guy, you know, similar to me when I fought Justin Gaethje, I said, we're just two guys who are cut from the exact same cloth. And I think he knows it. And I know it. And I think this is the same thing. Me and Dustin Poirier are cut from the same cloth, uh, tough, hard nosed fighters, um, who are fighting for the right reasons. And, uh, we love to fight. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Does it. Like when you say you're fighting just a man, does it help or hurt whenever, in your opinion, when fighters come to the ring with a little more like anger towards who they're fighting? Like, does that mm. make it easier for you or is that kind of a drawback? It's a, good, it's a good question and I think it's a case by case basis. I can tell you for me personally, it works out better when it's not, when it's not uh, personal, when there is no animosity. I've had animosity in the past and, and it hasn't really worked out well, you know, I, it, or as far as my best performances, I think my best performances are the ones where my heart is full. I'm excited. I am where my feet are and I am present in the moment. I've put in a great training camp. I know why I'm fighting. I know who, who I'm fighting and, and who's, I know, I know who I am and I know whose I am and I know who I'm fighting as far as the opponent. I know where his skill sets are. And, and when it comes to, to all of that, 
like I said, it's, it's not Dustin Poirier. It's just another body out there. And uh, I really just want to go out there and focus on the task at hand. Don't focus on what he has said. Don't focus on any bad blood because, you know, the media and the, the, the airwaves, they want to just continue to pump up the, the bad blood because that's how we sell tickets. But the good thing is if you, there could be no promotion of this fight, no bad blood whatsoever. If you say Michael Chandler's fighting Dustin Poirier, people are going to tune in because, because of our track record. So um, for me personally, I don't like to ha have any kind of animosity. And truthfully, I haven't lost one, one wink of sleep over uh, anything that he has said. It's just, uh, it's just kind of been part of the process and, here we are 10 days from now or so we're going to enjoy the, the fruits of our labor. So when you guys get into that ring and for the audience that's watching, it's going to watch at home, uh, ESPN pay-per-view by that uh, UFC 281 at Madison Square Garden. It's going to be an absolute just the, the crowd is going to be crazy. Me and Juju are going to be there. Hopefully we see you after the fight. We're going to ask you some questions. You got to remember me and him. We'll come up to you, give you a hug, say whatever. Remember, remember yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're going to come and see you after you win. But for the fans at home, um, explain to them kind of like an inside the, the fighter, inside the octagon look at if you do this, right? If they can watch you do this, you're going to win. Like, what is that one thing that you do that you've been working in training camp that if I do this level of wrestling or striking or whatever, and if I'm doing this, I'm in my bag, how does that look like in a victory? Yeah, I mean, for this fight, specifically for Dustin Poirier, I mean, I, I would say I would say a blanket statement overall, just – just composure and never letting a guy see you sweat. Never let a, let a guy see you second guess yourself. Um, never let a guy see your confidence waver. Um, the hard part about fighting a guy like Dustin Poirier is he's never out of a fight. He's just as tough, just as mentally tough, just as conditioned, just as stoic inside of the, the cage as, as I am. So um, we're two guys who aren't going to take a backward step, I don't believe. Uh, we're two guys who are going to go out there. But I think, you know, I think uh, – I think he's known as more of a striker than I am. And I'm known for a striker as well, but I do have the division one wrestling under my belt. So, um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll see how the fight plays out. You never really want to talk too much about game plans, not because you don't want to give it away, but really because you don't want to have your heart set on how you want a fight to go. And then all of a sudden it doesn't go that way. And then that in itself becomes a failure and you go back and you sit down in, in your stool and your coach is talking to you and you're like, man, this isn't going out, going the way that we thought it was going to. So, you know, it's just to go out there and be fluid and uh, let the fight progress the way that it's supposed to. And hopefully you get your hand raised. If we want to take a look back through this year, 2022, of some of the biggest fights, obviously you're a massive fan of the sport being one of the big faces of the sport. Um, I look at your knockout of Tony. I look at Leon's knockout of Usman. When you saw that, and you obviously know what it takes to put together such an incredible training camp and cut and fight and see that in the fifth round and that leg kick come up. Like, what did you feel when you saw that as a fan of the sport? Well, as a fan, of, well, number one, as a friend of Kamaru Usman, it was it was tough to watch. Yeah. Um, and number two, I mean, as a fan of the sport, I mean, I think even though it was at the expense of a friend of mine, Kamaru, it's this why we love the sport. And I think Kamaru would say the same thing. You know, win, lose, or draw. Sometimes it's your night. Sometimes it's not because, because Kamaru has been on that same, that Kamaru has been in that same position on the other side where it's like, boom, you hit a guy, they crumble. And you think, holy George, God, holy. Yeah, exactly. Like that was, that was easy. I can't, you know, not that it was easy, but holy cow, I can't believe it's over. And then, then you feel the, the rush of the, the exhilaration. You, and then you also feel the, the weight lifted off of your shoulders. Finally, the pressure, you can take a breath and hang out for a month or two without, thinking about, you know, this huge opportunity that you have. Um, but yeah, as a fan of the sport, man, that's, that's why we love this sport. Um, that's why the fans love it. That's why us as fighters is why we do it. Braving the unknown, moving forward, continuing in a course of action, irregardless of the opposition or any of your previous failures or the, you know, the, the danger that, you know, you're about to embark on. And it's just, uh, it's a beautiful sport and that's why people love it. What is uh what's what's your pre-fight routine like? What's the Ooh, yeah. day of the fight? You know what I mean? You wake up, boom. Is there a more special day or is it just a run of the mill day? You know, the first the first fight is always the weight cut. Once you get that weight cut done on third on uh, Friday, then you start to rehydrate and you kind of come back to yourself and you start really feeling good because it's been about forty eight hours since you've really felt great. Um, then it's just man, just focus on the positive. Don't think about the fight too much. I don't really think about the fight till I get get to the arena. You know because these fights are big stakes. You know, you're talking a huge pay-per-view, millions of people watching, Madison Square Garden, the number two guy in the world. It's it's big, big stakes. So 
every moment that you think about it, it elevates your heart rate. Every moment that you think about it, it's draining you of energy. Um, I stay awake all day long. I don't usually take a nap. I know some guys take naps, but eat well, uh, but not too much. Cause I still, I want to be a little bit hungry inside there. Um, just snack a little bit after I have a breakfast or a lunch and then, then snack the rest of the day. Um, and then once I get to the arena, I warm up extremely hard, get a really good sweat going, really good grappling going, hitting, hitting pads really hard. I usually listen to one song on repeat the entire time. Um, this time I've found a, a new song that I think I'm going to probably listen to. That's a, an album that's just coming out that hasn't been released yet, but it gets released tomorrow. Um, and it, they're usually just songs. They're not pump up songs. They're more actually slower, softer songs. They just remind me of my wife and, and mm. I, nice. you know, my, my boys and just how truly blessed I am to get to do what I do. And it's, it might sound counterintuitive because I'm usually crying and stuff back there, but that's the state that I want to be in when I go out there. So it's where I want to be. What's the song? Well, washed, washed by the water by need to the need to breathe is, is the one that I've, I've listened to on repeat for the last, last couple of fights. But now I think I'm going to add one more to it. It's called just like your mama by uh, Russell Dickerson. It's, it makes me cry every single day. I was going to say, you just got choked up just saying the name of the song, dude. I, I mean, I was crying on the way to practice today, listening to it. And, and truthfully, it's, it's about your son and how, in the mirror, you're going to look just like me, but deep down, boy, I pray that you'll be just like your mama, you know, and it's, it's, it's just a, you know, it's a testament to my wife and who she is and, and how well she loves me and supports me. And then just how much I love my sons and how much I want to just pour into them. And, and yeah, I want them to be great men like me, but you know, truthfully, I hope they're a little bit more like them. <laughs> Well, the, the, for people that don't know, you have two adopted sons. How has that process been from from literally the the moment that you're like we're going to adopt and and just the the transition through everything like how has that been for you and the family and for the kids it's been uh you know there, there's ups and downs of the adoption of the adoption journey you know there's definitely ups and downs definitely um a lot of uncertainty at times when you're trying to you know kind of figure it all out but you just got to stay pr prayer prayerful um stay positive seek to understand and uh you know years ago my wife told me that she wanted to adopt and I, I, you know, at that point I wanted to marry her. So I was like, well, I'll do anything to marry you. I, you know, I'm on board. And then we really started talking about it and, you know, realized that was the direction that we wanted to go. And then, um, you know, we, we matched with our, our first son happened six minutes. It was just, it was absolutely wow. so fast and it was so perfect. Um, our, our second son ACE, you know, there was a little bit more time and, it, and then it was also the timing trying to figure out, Hey, when is it time to, to bring another, you know, bring another uh, addition to the family. So we are mentally, physically, spiritually, financially just built up and ready to, to have two children, to, to not just have children, but to, to, to take care of these children and these boys like we need to. And, you know, it worked out well for us. April 19th, uh, Ace was born and here we are, man, two little baby boys and wow. love, love this fighting thing, but I can't wait to beat up Dustin and just get home, man. <laughs> Yes, sir, man. I also want to ask you about the illustrious, the brand new with the sparkle on it, Walk On Fitness. Oh, Tell us about it, bro. Come on. Man, dude, this, is, uh, this has been a labor of love over the last couple months, man. Uh, about six months I've been working on it. I mean, truthfully, the last 22 years I've been working on it. And in really the last, uh, you know, the last 10 years or so, I've kind of positioned myself as 50% MMA fighter, 50% fitness enthusiast. And so many people have come to me and said, hey, I want to talk about nutrition. Hey, I want to talk about losing weight, gaining weight, adding bulk, you know, building muscle. What programs are you using? So finally, I gave the people what they wanted, man. If you go to walkonfit.com right now, we're available on with for Androids right now. We're still in the process of getting approved through Apple for the App Store. But anybody right now can have access to it on your, on your iPhone, your phone, your tablet, your computer, um, laptop, anything on walkonfit.com. We have a web-based web -based version, and I hope that we get approval by Apple very soon but starting off with four programs you know your six week high level program where you can train like me so there's going to be a certain sector of the population in our community that's going to be able to do those kind of workouts but then we just have a regular four day or four four week leg program four week upper body program and four week body weight program that anybody on the entire planet can do and then we just got a ton of uh plans to continue to expand this thing and uh really change people's lives through fitness. We, we really are focusing on a triangular approach um, to, to bettering ourselves through fitness, nutrition, and mindset. You know, I'm a mindset guy. Yeah. 
I want to increase people's mind because you are what you are, where you are, because of what has gone into your mind. So um, I believe Thanks. we're going to have a huge impact. So check it out, walkonfit.com. UFC 281, Adesanya versus Pereira takes place Saturday, November 12th at the Mecca, Madison Square Garden. This man right here, Iron Michael Chandler, second time at Madison Square Garden. Um, probably one of the fights of the year between you and Dustin. I'm really excited for that. Um, we'll let you go on this last one. You guys are looking up now at a new champion in your division, Charles versus Islam. Islam took him down. Uh, can, can I have 30 seconds of your thoughts on that fight? and the division as a whole as you guys march up to a new champion? Yeah, man. Islam proved himself to be the real deal. He is our champion. He is the number one lightweight on the planet right now. So, man, I'm, I'm excited to uh, to get to compete against him uh, eventually. I do think, uh, you know, I stand, I stand by my words whenever I said it, when I said, hey, he hadn't fought anybody inside the top five. So I will not retract that statement at the time. It was a very true statement. But I do stand corrected. You, you go out there, you finish Charles Oliveira, you're the guy. So, you know, we'll see what happens with the division. We'll see if Volkanovski, you know, comes up and challenges for the belt. Um, I believe I'm going to put on such a great performance on, on November 12th that the UFC is going to have to say, hey, man, let's let him get through a lightweight first before he before we let, let him fight some, somebody who's 15 pounds lighter than him. So, um, you know, we'll see. But um, Islam is the real deal. He is who he said he was. And uh, now we all get to hopefully get a crack at him. Let's go. Iron Mike Chandler versus Dustin Poirier this uh, this upcoming weekend, November 12th. Me and Juju will be there in attendance. Hopefully see you get your hand raised, uh, ask you some good questions. You got to remember us on the way out. Uh, we'll, we'll shoot you some finger guns or something when you uh, when you get that dub. Mike, thanks for, for joining us, man. We're, we're rooting for you. We, uh, we love your story. We love your family. We love everything you do, and we really appreciate you coming on. You got it, man. Thank you guys so much for having me. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Good luck. Yeah.